Hey everyone, Federico here, welcome to a new lesson of the Let's Start with Jitter course. In this one we're going to talk about VZ modules. So VZ modules is this library of objects or modules that allow us to work with uh, video, connect video with audio, connect video with other data streams. It's a library that is built in in Max, you don't have to download anything. And it's a great way to get started uh, with video processing and working with video in Max. Actually some people just learn VZ and then call it a day with Jitter, that's totally fair. It's a very complex set of tools, so without any further ado, let's jump into it. So this is a stripped down version of the patch from lesson three. So we just got the JIT world running and we got the JIT movie with uh, all the attributes that we set and it's playing the movie as a stream of textures. As we say, this is the most performant way, the kind of the correct way in a lot of cases of doing it. Uh, let's get rid of a couple of things like this texture object. We don't really need it. Cool. So we just got a JIT movie object that is playing the sunflower.mp4 uh, movie, which is a built-in video inside Max. You can find it if you go into video and then you uh, scroll a bit down. Sunflower is right here. So let's now get to VZ. If you go on the left of the patch here, you can see that there is this icon with a V, and if you go with the mouse over it, it will say Bitsy. So I just click on it. And as you can see, it shows us this very long list of objects. And these objects, if I just try to get one in the patch, I just drag and uh, release it in the patch, uh, you can see that it creates this module. So this doesn't look like a standard Max object, right? This looks more like um, a graphic user interface object. So an object that we can just control using our mouse. And that's exactly what this is. So Vizi is this library, library of modules we can call them, to work with video. But not only, it also has some general utilities that we can use in general maxing, which are not strictly related to videos. So I just drag and drop this module in my patch. As you can see, it's, it has a green stripe here. Now, busy modules are color coded. So the green means that this is an effect. We're going to see in a second which color codes we got. And it works like this. I just drag it, I input it between, for example, my video output and a JP window. And as you can see, it's applying some sort of effort to uh, our video. Indeed, this is a BR coser, which means we can modify with this object the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation of our video. A bit all like you will do in Premiere with some color correction tools or something like that. So this is a very simple to use. We just have to put it inside our video stream and then we can just turn these dials to modify the effect values. So before we go any further, uh, let me show you something that I didn't show you in the previous lessons, but it's pretty cool, which is we can send a texture or a matrix, but it's better to send a texture to JIT world and it will display it in the floating window. So this window that we haven't used yet, we can use it like this, we can send uh, texture to the JIT world and it will display it in this window. So if you want to have this image, for example, on a projector or on another screen, you will just move it to another screen and then you can put it to full screen with escape. So if I press escape, it's going to go full screen. Then if I press escape again, this is going to uh, go back to normal size. So let's write this down ask for full screen. And so this is a very useful uh, feature of the JIT world. If you want to have our video output in this window that we can just send it to JIT world just like that. Cool, let's go back to Vizi. And if you notice, the Vizi module is outputting a texture itself. So it gets a texture as input and it outputs a texture as well. And indeed, Vizi modules are made to work with textures. You can also send a matrix to it, a video in the form of a stream of matrices, but that will not be the optimal way for the reasons we said in lesson two. That's why all the Vizi modules that process some sort of input work with textures, and they will also output textures. To keep the whole uh, video processing in the realm of the GPU, therefore making it very fast and performant. Cool, another thing to know, about VZ modules is that they are actually all abstractions. An abstraction is simply an object that I create using uh, some other Max objects. And then I can recall it in the patch by creating a new object and type it uh, the name of the Max path, like if it were an object itself. For example, there is this uh, GGL slab Gauss 6X. It's actually an abstraction. If you double click on it, you can see that this is actually just a sub patch with some max objects inside, but I can create it and use it um, just inputting its name like if it was a normal max object. 
And with the modules are exactly that. The only difference is that the interface is uh, visualized through a B patcher. So a B patcher, as you may well know, it's an object that will uh, contain a patcher inside that we can interact with from a parent patcher. So this will be like a sub patcher, but we can see its content. So that's pretty nice. And that's how the BGC modules are created. Very cool. So let's go back here to our list. And as you can see, this list is very big. So this could be a bit overwhelming at first, right? There is a lot of stuff going on. But thankfully, Cycling74 provided us with a nice launcher patch. So if we go here into Extras, and we go into PZ, Launch, just click on it, you can see that this patcher appears. And this patcher is kind of the launching point for our introduction in the BZ world. So the first message here says a guide to BZ modules. Let's check it out. It will show us this patcher, uh, which will contain a module from each one of the BZ families. So I said before the BZ modules are color coded. So each color represents a family, which represents a set of functions that these modules carry out. So let's explore a bunch of those families of modules. For example, we got input modules. I will just go fast through all the families and then we're going to see some objects from each family. So then we got the effect modules, which as you can imagine, this is a bunch of uh, effect for video. Going to see some in a short time. And then we got the generate modules, which generate some data to manipulate the parameters for the effects uh, for our videos. Then we got utility modules, which have a bunch of modules that make our life easier in a lot of ways. Then we got the uh, transform modules. These are all modules that work on transforming the position of the pixels of the input to give us a different output. Then we got mix composite modules. Like for example, if you want to mix some video together or you want to subtract or sum them, that's what you are looking for. And then there are the output modules that uh, will allow us to record our beautiful uh, processed video output. So let's go back to our patch and let's see a VZ module that could replace our JITMovie object. So we're going to VZ here, we're going to inputs and there is this one called AB player. So we just drag it and drop it and there it is. And this works exactly like a JITMovie object with output texture. So if I go into the max library of built-in videos, I just get the chickens for example, I drop it here. As you can see, it will start playing the chickens video. So if I then connect this to the JIT world, we will see the chicken videos. And this module offer us a bunch of uh, nice features. For example, we can scrub the video. We can choose a point in the video using this scrubbing slider. We can choose like to loop a certain part of the video. Uh, we can choose to change the speed. Uh, we can reset the attributes hitting this air button. We can stop, pause, play, and so on. And we can control all these um, parameters of this module using those inputs. And this is something that all the BZ modules have. So they all have inputs which allow us to control the parameters. For example, the first one is the playback, playback rate. So if I will create a dial here and I will go in the inspector of the dial and set it to float output and the number of steps range set it to one, then we will have that moving this dial will give us number between zero and one. And this will uh, control the playback rate. In fact, if you go with the mouse over the inputs, it will show you which parameter that input is controlling. So that's pretty nice. So moving this dial, I can control the playback rate. Uh, then let's see what else we got. So this will be the loop start. I can change the loop start using these, uh, using again my dial and probably we will go in this is going to be the loop end, right? And then let's see, we got the current scrap point, the reset buttons. And from the last input, we can send a read message to JITMovie to just read another video from our hard drive, for example. Now the outputs of this uh, module will give us the video output as a texture, as we said, and then also the audio. So if the video has any audio, it will come out from these two outlets, audio left and audio right. And from the last outlet, we will get position, uh, playback data for this movie. So this will go between zero and one, zero being the beginning of the movie, one being the end. But what I think it's pretty important to understand is that this module is just a wrapper around the cheat movie object. Okay, it does nothing magic. It just gives us a nice ready-made module to work with JITMovie. In fact, the JITMovie object allows us more control on the movie being played because we can set attributes like unique and we can get the frame rate, a bunch of stuff, while uh, this 
we don't have so much ready access to what's going on inside this module. So if you want to have the maximum control, you are going to use the max object directly without going through the wrapper. That's kind of a general rule with VZ modules and modules in Max in general. If you want to have the maximum control, you always want to build the thing yourself. So cool, this is our video player. Um, let's see what else we got. If we go into VZ and we go into input, there is a grabber. Now the grabber object will take uh, the camera input. As you can see, this is the camera from my MacBook. So this module will allow us to get the camera input. The object that this uh, module is wrapping is called the JIT grab object, which we haven't seen yet, but it's very similar to the JIT movie object. It's just going to grab a camera stream from our computer. Uh, movie folder will play a folder with movies and player, it's like the AV player, just doesn't have the audio part, just has the video part. Very nice. So let's go now to see some cool effects. So we have a library of effects here. And some very awesome ones like Sketcher, for example, which will uh, basically get the edges of our video. Then we got Resampler. And note that if we want to disable a module, so kind of cut it out of the chain of effects, we can click on this on button, set it off. So the green modules are all the effect modules. There is so many of them. Mutilator, I think it's also another cool one. Right, this will modify the color channels of our input textures. Then we got the generate modules, which generate video themselves. So for example, like pattern mapper. It doesn't take a texture as input, right? Because it just generates things. So we can connect it directly to JitWorld and it will generate this pattern according to the function that we choose. For example, like cosine. And then let's say we don't want to rotate it, we don't want to zoom. If we multiply this by one, we can see that this is how a cosine function looks like. This looks like it's using the absolute value. So even when it goes in the negative, we will see the, the color. Instead of being minus one, it becomes one. And this generator module is really cool because we can create an abstract video super fast. So let's say now that we want to get some controlling values for those parameters. Let's go in BNC and again to generate. And let's get, for example, the attractor module. So this module, if we go in its help file, and by the way, every VZ object has its own help file, like regular max objects. This object generates stream of, uh, of max data, just max numbers, which are optimized to work with VZ according to Navier Stokes equations. So this will remind a bit of uh, fluid simulation kind of our fluid behaves. So if we connect these to one of the parameters, for example, let's see the value for the zoom dial, right? And then we can choose another output for another control, uh, the rotation, for example. Uh, let's maybe make the rate a bit slower. Nice. Let's see how we can composite this video that we just generated with the, our video from, uh, for example, either the sunflower or the video from the AV player. So let's go into Mix Composite and let's get X Fader or something. So we can then connect this video and um, the video coming out here from this other uh, VT module or directly the video coming out from GTMUI because this works with textures. So every texture is going to work. It doesn't matter if you come from a VT module or from a regular Max object, it's going to work. So let's connect this here and send this to JitWorld. Nice. So we can now cross fade between these two videos. Um, let's check also the mix fader module, which basically does the same thing, but also allow us to control what is the operation that is applied on those videos in order to composite them. So for example, we got absolute difference, the average values, we can get some cool operators like bitwise operators, uh, we can get the minimum values between the two videos, we can of course like multiply them. I'm just messing around, but if you spend some time with these modules, you are going to get some super cool results. Actually, if you check the help files of the VZ modules, often you will see a lot of cool stuff happening inside them. So I encourage you to check them out. Let's get also transform module in the mix, like for example, Desolator. Let's apply it after the whole thing. And now we are starting to get some interesting stuff. Now there is one thing I want to point out, which is these inputs in the bits modules will work, all of them will work with values between zero and one. So let's get, for example, here the scale value. If I send a number between zero and one, this 
is going to cover the whole range. So the inputs for bz parameters are all set to work for with values between 0 and 1. But let's say that we want to set exactly like the value 3.20 for the scale. It will be a bit difficult to make exactly the math what will be the corresponding in the range 0 to 1. So we can use the message exact after our value to set exactly the value that we want. So for example, if I want the value 3.2, I will just type 3.2 here, exact, and this will set it to 3.2. Okay, so that's something kind of important to know. If we go now in, again, back in the generate modules, there is a bunch of them that also allow us to work with audio input and transform it to VZ parameters or even textures. So for example, there is this follower object that let me get some audio input. So I will just use my microphone input and let's see, I will just connect this here. And this will follow like the audio um, amplitude and will give us three different outputs. One is for the high frequencies, one is for the middle, one is for the low. So let me get the one for the high, for example, and I can just use it to, um, uh, to change here the scale. This value will be between zero and one most likely, right? So it's already optimized to work with VZ input parameters. And I can then use this to uh, modify some parameter that I want. So that's really cool. I could use it, for example, to modify the crossfade here uh, between these two uh, inputs. So these modules are also great. There is a bunch of them that allow us to get also amplitude for different frequencies. Let's see, audio splitter. Uh, we'll, uh, if we go in the help file, we can see that this will give us four different amplitude values for three different frequency bands. So there is a lot to explore here. If I would explore all the bits modules, this will take like all the day. But this is something definitely that you can do on your own. And if you will explore them all, you will get a great set of tools that you can use for your visuals. Okay, great. So let's say that we got, uh, we are satisfied with our um, processing, with our video, what's going on. Now we want to record it to the hard disk to share it later. So what we can do is to go into the output modules and we can go into the recorder. For example, if we just want to record the, the video without the audio, we send the latest module in the chain to the recorder module, right? Of course, it must be the last one with all our efforts and stuff. We choose a directory. I will just put it in a directory in my desktop called BZ Export. I will open that. And then I have to choose a codec. Uh, if I want to have a lossless codec, for example, I could choose ProRes 4444. I think it's almost lossless. So let's go and hit record. And now it's recording. I could modify a bit of parameters or I could just have the audio modify the parameters by itself. Okay, so I will just stop the recording. Let's see what we got. And this is the video that we just recorded. Now, a super important thing to, to think about is that the size of this video is uh, 1280 by 720. And why is that if the Sunflower is actually a full HD video? And that's because the size of our final texture is going to be equal to the size of the texture, which goes in in the left input of our top uh, module in the chain. So if we check the size of this pattern mapper texture here, we can see that it's 1280 by 720. So this goes in our top module here, and this sets the dimensions for the final output. If we would invert these two inputs, here, video one and video two, and now we would record that, stop it, now we will have that our final output as a size of 1920 by 1080, so full HD. So if this is what you want, um, be careful about that. Always check the final uh, video size. And if it doesn't look like the one you want, uh, this is how you can fix that. Always put the video with the size that you want in the left inlet. And this is a common thing when working with matrices and textures uh, in Max. We are going to see that in future videos in much greater detail. Okay, so this was it for this lesson. In this one, we saw what the busy modules are, how we can access the launcher patch from Extras here, busy launch. This will give us all the information that we need. Every busy module has its own help file. And the final message is that busy modules are great. In the future videos, we are going to recreate the functionality of some of these busy modules manually. So this will give us greater understanding of how this stuff works. But for starting and just get some things done uh, fairly quickly and getting out very professional results, busy modules 
are definitely your friends. So thanks a lot for following. You can get this patch if you want it. It's just really a demo without and uh, not much thinking behind. But if you want to grab the patch, you can find it on my Patreon for free. Shout out to all my supporters on Patreon, uh, which keep the channel going on. If you would like to support the channel as well, check out my Patreon page. And besides supporting the channel, you will also get access to hundreds of patches that I created during the years. Also, if you found this video useful, a like on the way out will be very much appreciated. This kind of uh, keeps the video showing up for people that search for similar stuff. So thanks a lot, and I will see you in the next one. Have fun. Ciao.